here is the test bench for the Spy Master with single chip select. Very similar to the other test bench, except we're instantiating the, the code we just talked through. Spy Master with chip select module. Um, and in this one, we can send single bytes, similar to how we were doing it before. And uh, I won't talk through this because it, go back to the Spy Master test bench video to understand what, how this is working. It's, it's very, very similar. Uh, sending out data, receiving data, and making sure it looks good. The EDA Playground for this one is edaplayground.com forward slash x forward slash 6 capital H capital T lowercase a, 6HTA. And there you will see the test bench on the left, which is the code that I just showed you, and the spy master as well as the spy with chip select added in. So you can actually have two pieces of code here, and one instantiates the other. The chip select instantiates the master. So pretty neat. Um, you can have a lot of different files running at the same time. Let's do it. Run it. So go to the waveform viewer. This one has more signals on it because it's more complicated. I'll actually show you here. So this is at this is simulating both the SPI master, which we've already simulated. It looks like it's working, as well as the chip select functionality around it. So looking at this briefly, we got a reset signal here. It's high. Um, and then we have this chip select. <clears throat> We're doing a two byte data transfer right in this particular test bench. You can set it up for whatever you want. I just just two bytes. So chip select goes low. We drive C1, we drive C2, and then chip select goes high again. So we, there's a two byte burst uh, of information on the spy. And it looks like it's sent out correctly. Let's just take a look at the uh, console here. Oh, that it changed. Okay, so we sent out C1, we received C1, sent out C2, received C2. So it looks like it's working correctly. Um, you can scrub through this. You can change the number of bytes per chip select uh, to make sure that it's working for your particular application. I definitely recommend your SPI mode. You set it up for your SPI mode. You set it up for whatever you, whatever your parameters are and, and uh, <clears throat> just send some test data through and make sure everything looks good for your for your needs. Uh, but that's that's it. Um, so now you have a full SPI master as well as chip select functionality. And in the next video, we're going to be demonstrating how that works to actually interface to a real integrated circuit. So we got a cool demo. Hey, I'll just wanted to jump in at the end of this video real quick to say, please check out patreon.com forward slash NANDland and consider supporting me there. I would really appreciate it. It helps me cranking out these good tutorials and these videos. So if you found this valuable, uh, consider heading over to Patreon and supporting me. Keep me making good content. Uh, in addition to that, please consider getting yourself a Go board so you can actually program this code and try it out on real hardware. They're available at nanland.com. And thanks for your support.